people coming actually and helping to break the collusion of media silence on this issue that is going on, not just in the UK, but around the world. So thank you very much, people, because right now you're very visible to all the people in London and they're saying, why are you all wearing sunflowers? Why are you here? So that's a really good start. On March the 19th, the Secretary of State is due to announce a decision on Hinkley C. For all of their promises of jobs and benefits, EDF could still walk away without a moment's thought if they don't get what they want. EDF, as has been pointed out, are corporate criminals and they can't and shouldn't be trusted. In the last 12 months, EDF have had senior executives jailed for spying on protesters. They've taken us to the High Court in London to evict us from a barn in Somerset. I think the phrase used at the time was using a hammer to crack a nut. And then, as you've heard from one of our previous speakers, more recently, EDF have um, tried to jail the uh, Dash for Gas protesters and are now trying to sue them for five million. In fact, just a few days ago, Henry Prolio, the head of EDF in France, has had his premises searched on the behest of the German government. More evidence of criminal activity in this corporation. After Fukushima happened, they denied that there was a severe accident, constantly downplaying the severity. When they admitted that there was an accident going on, they said, don't worry, it can't happen here. The government's own Wakeman report concluded that it can't happen here because we don't have earthquakes and we don't have tsunamis. In 1607, a tsunami came up the Severn Estuary and caused the loss of 30,000 lives. Thank goodness Hinkley Point nuclear power station wasn't there then. In the 1400s, there was an earthquake strong enough to demolish the church at the top of Glastonbury Tor. Thank God Hinkley Point wasn't there then. Japan has been criticised for its relationship between the nuclear village and the nuclear regulators. Here in the UK, the government have rearranged the structure of our regulators to facilitate the new bill that they wish to see. Inside DEC are embedded industry um, officials from EDF and from other utilities. Japan was also criticised about the way in which their children have been brainwashed about nuclear power. They've been forced after the Fukushima disaster to remove some of their propaganda from the curriculum. Here in the UK and in Somerset, the government are ensuring that that same propaganda is infiltrating our national curriculum. I have a 13-year-old son in school in Somerset who is being taught by the school system that nuclear is a renewable technology, that it is green, that it is economic, and that it's some kind of solution to climate change. Our schools allow EDF into the schools to misinform the children about nuclear power and yet our community groups cannot enter those same schools to speak to the children about why we're opposed. We could of course go in if we agreed to take part in an EDF funded and editorially controlled film but we declined to do so. And I have to say also that in Somerset Somerset is the only place where high-level spent nuclear fuel is dealt with less than 100 yards from the playground of a primary school in a densely populated area. Where else in the world do we deal with nuclear waste right next to a children's playground? The Japanese did at least have a credible, well-rehearsed evacuation plan due to the high frequency of earthquakes and tsunamis they experience. Here in the UK, there is no evacuation plan. Detailed plans are only made for the mile or two around Hinkley Point where populations are sparsely scattered. Why is this? It's because the government tells us that it couldn't happen here. Let's make a commitment to our children, to our grandchildren, and to all future generations of children that we will eradicate the use of this dirty, dangerous, expensive, and most of all, unnecessary technology. Just one reactor at Hinkley Point has the potential to have a huge negative impact on the renewables sector. Indeed, it already has, and they haven't even begun building it yet. Making a commitment to shifting our economy away from the current model of infinite growth on a finite planet, changing our behaviour to demand less energy and pursuing real solutions 
to climate change was reducing the radioactive risks posed by the hundreds of vulnerable coastal reactors. All of these things are going to require an incredible commitment from us. This may be the biggest battle of our lives, but I know that we're all up for the challenge. People, when you go away from here today, I want you to look up a report that's online that you can all see called Zero Carbon Britain. That report shows that we can be 90% renewable by 2030, smashing the government's targets for renewable energy without recourse to nuclear power, fracking or any other extreme energy. I urge you all to read that report and communicate it and let's start building the energy future we want in our communities. Thank you. Yeah.